Hello, hello, hello. Christina Shear here from the Mass Cell 360 team. Delighted to be with you today with a special, special episode. First off, I do want to say Beth O'Hara sends her hellos, our founder at Mass Cell 360. I'm going to be just subbing in for her today to have a great conversation with our special guest, Dr. Kathleen King. Our topic is finding freedom from chronic illness. And this is something that you guys have been asking for. You've been telling us you want to hear more from Dr. Kathleen. You want to hear more about the Primal Trust Academy and community that she's created. So we are here to do it today. Go ahead, comment below. Let us know where you're joining in from. And I, I'm curious, do you currently utilize Prime, Prime, excuse me, Primal Trust? Um, I would love to know a little bit more about you and where you're tuning in from. So I'm going to watch those comments come in live here on the, the right hand side. This is always my my favorite part. So thank you for joining us today. Effie's here from Washington and more are going to come. So as we get into that, I do want to just share a little bit more about um, this presentation, just so you know, it's for educational purposes, and it's not meant to treat, diagnose, or prevent any illnesses. Be sure to discuss anything mentioned today um, with your healthcare providers um, in regards to any health recommendations. All right, let's see here. I see we've got people from Texas. We've got Lillian from Germany. Karen's here from Oregon. Love it. Car uh, another Karen's here from Los Angeles. Three months using Primal Trust. All right, Karen, you're going to have to tell us how it's going. Lori's here from Michigan. Fellow Michigander here. I'm in Michigan myself. We've got our um, Rainies here from the UK. More people coming in from New Jersey, Alabama, England. Wow. I love that people are here from all over the world. We've got the Canadians in the house now. Deborah's here also from San Diego. She hasn't used Primal Trust yet, but she's excited to tune in today live and hear from Dr. Kathleen King and learn more about it. So this is great. Melissa, oh, look at Melissa. She's in Irvine, uh, California, 1.5 years using Primal Trust and it's life-changing. All right, Melissa, thanks for sharing that with us. That's so good. We are just, again, so delighted to have all of you with us today. So as you guys know, um, based on our show, we do awful, excuse me, we do use affiliate links in our show. So we want you to know that a small portion, uh, we receive a commission and that allows us to continue to create incredible content like this to educate you, to inspire you and bring you hope, especially when it comes to chronic illness and the, the many things that you're dealing with, whether it be mast cell activation syndrome, Lyme, you're dealing with POTS, whatever it is, histamine intolerance, oxalate issues, we get it. We know what it's like. Our team knows what it's like. And, um, and we're excited to share those resources with you today. So again, thank you for your support. All right. And at the end, depending on how long our chat goes today, we are planning to have a live Q&A with Dr. Kathleen King. So just know that we'll want those topics to be specific to chronic illness. We'll, we'll cover it at the end. Submit your question once. You can go ahead and put it in the comments. We'll ask for that towards the end of the uh, conversation today. And just know that we're not able to do like in-depth personal health questions. So keep it kind of general, um, specific to either her specialty or Primal Trust as a whole. Okay, awesome. So during today's call, we are going to talk about chronic illness, how it impacts your health, the science of nervous system healing, tools for your brain, your vagus nerve, and more, how you can improve your hormones and your digestive system, and immune regulation through calming your nervous system. Let me see, show of hands in the chat, how many people have our nervous, our mast cell nervous system reboot course? I know a bunch of you signed on and got that this past week while we ran our special offer. I know I'm going through the reboot roadmap myself right now and learning more about how to calm my nervous system and um, how to calm yours. So I love it. Anita said, I do. So great to have you with us, Anita and Louise in that course already. And we're going to also talk about how to increase your resilience and improve your follow through with your health. I don't know about you guys. So actually, let's do a quick poll. How many of you on a scale of one to 10, one being I do an excellent job, like 
I, I got it together. I am so great at the follow through when it comes to my health and 10 being, I could really use some help on follow through when it comes to my health, my nervous system and my resiliency. So scale of one to 10, how many of y'all are, where are you at right now on that scale of one to 10 and needing support and building your resiliency for your health? All right, I'm gonna give you guys a second to answer that. And while you do, all right, thank you, Linda, with a 10. We got Terry with a five, Anne's at a six. I love it. Thank you. Keep those coming in so we can see that. I know Dr. Kathleen King is seeing everybody's responses. You guys can't see it. She's off camera, but she's like, oh my gosh. This is why we're here, y'all. This is why we're here to help and to see you have a breakthrough in your life. And so we're going to dive, dive into that. So let me go ahead and welcome our guest. This is Dr. Dr. Kathleen King, we are so excited. So Hi, everyone. I'm so glad, glad to see all of you from all over the place. And um, very cool about the Michigan. I'm from Michigan as well. So that oh, I Michigan, didn't know that. Yeah, I grew up in East Jordan, Michigan, up north. That's um, phenomenal. Yeah. Where are you at, Christina? I'm in the Troy area, so Metro oh, Detroit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I never went down there. More <laughs> <laughs> I, the part. I did say y'all earlier. So, uh, so, yeah, Utah, so I'm in a very different climate. So hello to all the Utah folks. Thank you for having <laughs> me. This is a good Absolutely. conversation to have. And I know that so many people have been wanting to talk um, from this community. So I'm glad to be here. Absolutely. Well, we're delighted to have you. And, you know, anytime we welcome a new guest onto the show, I like to just kind of set the tone. And Beth does an incredible job with this as well, just by sharing a little bit of your bio. So I, I hate to be like very formal and like read the bio, but I think it's important because there are so many different people that hop on a Facebook Live now, hop on a YouTube Live and share their thoughts. But I want them to understand that when they hear you speak today, it is coming from such a place of expertise and understanding that it's, it's you're not just an expert, but you're an expert on chronic illness. You're an expert on chronic trauma, relationship and attachment repair, as well as like inner child healing. Those are some big things. So if anyone's listening and that's already ticked a box off in your own personal life, then stay tuned in because it's going to get even better. You've got an in-depth, um, I was reading a, an in-depth doctoral level like education, but you also have training on the physical therapy side, which I just find so interesting as someone that's had several ACL knee injury repairs over my life. I've been in a lot of PT um, and I know how much that affects the nervous system and the mind and the body. So you've got both sides of those, plus you actually are coaching actively within your own practice with wellness and lifestyle education. So that's incredible. And then what we're going to really dig into today is your own story. I'm so excited that you're going to share a little bit more about how you've spent the last two decades of your life really going through deep debilitating illness and you, you've found your way out. I know you've got a new book, so congratulations to you. It is called How Healing Happens. And if you guys stick with us to the very end, we're going to share a link to download her her healing guide for free. It's You were telling me about it before we went live. If you want to mention it yeah. now so we can kind of yeah. get them excited now, I think that would be good. Yeah. It's how many pages? It's 127. And this is, we're giving you the digital form for free uh, before we put it into print form and expand upon it. But we really wanted to create the first book that combines polyvagal theory, brain retraining, vagus nerve toning, somatics, and trauma healing. Cause when I was going through this, I was piecing it together from all sorts of resources. And I wanted to show people how to put these practices together and how it relates to what's going on with your chronic symptoms so that you don't have to research all over the place. It's, it's kind of like a mini level one program. We even have free tools in it. And I'm really excited. It was really our attempt to help the world see that there is a solution with chronic illness and um, you know, it took me well over a decade to find that solution. So I'm trying to make that a little easier for you guys and do it in a way that's free. Absolutely. I know Beth and our community can relate to that. We hear those stories over and over again. It took 10, 20 years to get a diagnosis, how many times they experienced, you know, being gaslit at the doctor's office. And they mm -hmm. had to read blogs and piecemeal yeah. different things together. So thank you for putting together such an exceptional resource to help 
those of us just getting started in this process of like, hey, I have mystery symptoms and I need help. And the doctor hasn't been able to get me there. So I, I'd love to start off by just asking you to share a little bit more about your journey. You know, yeah. you've had a significant journey with chronic illness, and I would just love for you to share a little bit about that with us. Thank you. I, I definitely know what it's like to be bed bound, to be un unable to do things for years, not just months, but years on end where you feel like you lost trust with your body. Um, for me, my symptoms started actually back in 2003. So over, <clears throat> over 20 years ago with a parasite infection, I was traveling and then I became sensitive to everything. I didn't know at the time what was going on. People didn't talk about mold and lime and pots and all of that yet. I just felt unwell and I struggled to work for several years. I was still trying to work and eventually I couldn't even work. I, I was just done. And, you know, I was kind of like up and down for several years, but I was never able to get back to work. I was never able to hike. I was never able to do much. I could like have good weeks where I could maybe shower. And eventually the diagnoses started to pile up. You know, we had the Lyme diagnosis, the chronic fatigue, the mold toxicity, the POTS and dysautonomia, um, the insomnia, the hormone issues, the sensitivities to everything, um, the mast cell, all that stuff all the stuff that you guys know all about, um, <clears throat> I was stuck with it. And I went from doctor to doctor and I saw some of the best doctors um, in the US and I couldn't tolerate their treatments. I was so sensitive to everything. I'd start to like, start to tolerate and then my body would respond and I'd flare and I'd crash. I know that's probably familiar for a lot of you that have just tried things and tried things and like, why is this taking so long? And Eventually, you know, I had kids as well. Somehow early on, I was able to get pregnant and I had these small children that all of those years I couldn't show up for. I had full-time help. And <clears throat> I think what started happening over time is that the whole thing was just so traumatizing between the symptoms, um, not able to show up for my kids, not really know what, knowing what's going on. The mold thing didn't come in until later. And I had been living in mold the whole time, many, many years. Nobody ever mentioned this thing called mold that <laughs> could be an issue. Um, but we lost all of our money uh, trying to treat this. And I remember just giving up one day, like the doctors can't fix it. We're out of money. I don't know what to do. And in that giving up, something happened where I just decided I'm just going to have to make the best life I can with what I've got. I'm missing out on my kids' life. What can I do? I can go outside and lay on the grass while they play around me. So I started doing that. And in that surrender, I started to live a little bit. And I started to feel a little better by simply just letting everything be. Um, but I also had an epiphany at that same time. You see, I used to work as a physical therapist with chronic pain. And I was trained in the methods of John Sarno and mind-body connection. And I knew that chronic pain was modulated in the brain and that you could shift out of chronic pain by basically shifting the way you're focusing. And I thought, I wonder if chronic Lyme disease and mold toxicity and all these things that are going on is really modulated a lot in the brain and the nervous system, the same way chronic pain was. So I started doing a lot of my old methods that I used as a physical therapist before I was ill a decade prior. And I started getting better and I was like, I've had these skills for over a decade going from doctor to doctor and my own tools that I use for pain, I started to use for me because I didn't have pain because I knew how to treat pain and it was nothing that it just never stuck. So I used those tools, the nervous system tools, the brain retraining tools, the functional neurology tools. And I started climbing out of chronic illness and I was shocked. And then I added I did some research on other brain retraining programs and somatic work and started adding that in and it was even better. And over time, I got my life back and I was able to start working and then I started coaching people and eventually I developed Primal Trust, weaving together this multifaceted approach of targeting the brain and the nervous system to calm down the stress response, to calm down the inflammatory response to the mold, to the Lyme, et cetera. And this is really important. It doesn't mean that this was all in my head all of those years. And a lot of you that are listening, it can be offending to say brain retraining and nervous system work can help you heal from this very real threat 
toxins, pathogens, etc. But what you don't understand is the body has, I liken it to two different reactions. You have your first reaction, which is the initial onslaught, the, the pathogen, the toxin that comes into your body and really is toxic and your body has to deal with it. In some people's bodies, they can deal with it. They can get bit by a tick, they can be in mold and their body can process it. Why? Because they don't go into something called cell danger response ongoing and get stuck in it. Then we have the secondary response, which is the way that our body is reacting to the fact that we've got these threatening things in our system. Some people's bodies, they handle it. Like I said, other people, they go into a massive threat response. That's where you're going to see your mast cell, your, your, um, you know, your overreaction, your inflammation, your body goes into a reaction to what's happening from that first response. Brain retraining and nervous system work target that second response. It calms down the brain and the body's reaction to what you've been exposed to. And when that happens, the body can self heal. It wants to heal. Now that doesn't mean that you don't need to, um, remediate mold or do protocols. Sometimes you still do, but sometimes you don't. We have hundreds of people who are not able to afford treatment and they still heal by calming down this second reaction. So I'll pause there. That was a long winded, <laughs> my story plus some teaching. <laughs> that was perfect. That was absolutely incredible. And I'm sure there are, I mean, we have hundreds of people joining us right now, literally from all over the world. And I'm sure there's a bit of that moment of, as you were listing off all the different things that you've gone through going, oh gosh, I'm dealing with the mold. I'm dealing with this recent diagnosis. I'm dealing with this. I'm dealing with this. We don't have any more money for treatment. And they've felt that moment of hopelessness. Yeah. And <clears throat> I love that you had training already inside you to help be a part of your healing journey. That's yeah. just so incredible. I, I of, uh, I'm like, why? Sometimes I'm, I still ask, why did I have to go through 10 years of this? Like, cause I used to do this, but you know, the truth is, is I think that I was meant to go down this path of trying to have somebody else fix me, something external, help me heal. And it wasn't meant to be my path. I was meant to learn the self-empowered path so that I could teach it because I was just blocked everywhere I went. And it was so frustrating. I mean, I went to so, dozens and dozens of practitioners over years and years and years. And I'm like, why won't God let me heal? <laughs> because Absolutely. my story was to learn how to self-heal so that I could teach others. But it took me a long time. I I remember my therapist early on, I was doing parts work and trauma therapy throughout this whole time. Sure. And we can talk about why that wasn't effective early on. But one of the things he said, he's like, Kathleen, I think that 80% of your Lyme symptoms will calm down if you'd learn how to self-regulate your nervous system. I wanted to flip him off and I screamed back, no, 80% of my Lyme symptoms will go away when I get rid of Lyme, you jerk. <laughs> Right. This exactly. was, you know, the big irony is that many years later, he was right. He was oh, right. Wow. But I was the person that got very offended whenever you'd say that. So if you're getting offended by this, I was there. And I'm telling you, this method that we're doing in Primal Trust really works um, for people that, you know, give it their all and they understand why calming down the nervous system is actually going to help even if they're still in mold or even if they still have that pathogen in their body. Absolutely. And I, I know, I, I think we all wish there was a magic pill or a book we could read or just something that we could flip the switch and, and oh, gosh, it would be so much better. I, I know I've had that same, a similar conversation with my counselor. Now I didn't want to flip her off, but I was so glad that we had the conversation <laughs> where she was able to say, Hey, I know you want to work on relationships. I know you want to work on this um, more of the intellectual side of things. You want to talk talk therapy, right? But we yeah. have got to keep coming back to regulating your nervous system. Because if you are, you keep dealing with certain things, you get stuck in functional freeze or, or freeze, or you just end up in such a, a state of, um, of worry, of fear, of panic, you know, these loops start to happen in our minds. And um, it doesn't matter what doctor you go see, right? Yeah. Like, 
And so I would imagine that 10 year process for you helped you build up those those tools. So I want to ask just really, I mean, this is this is a pretty direct question, but I would love for you to speak to the individuals on here right now um, that are maybe dealing with that stuck place. They've tried the doctors, they've tried the tools, they've spent the money, they're frustrated and help them understand what happens when we get stuck in chronic worry and feel free to even share how you pulled yourself out of that. Yeah. Yeah. So a few things about chronic worry. Our brain worries as a way of controlling. You're actually addicted to your worry at some point. Once this has kind of gone on for a while, the brain starts to use that what might happen rumination as a way to get a sense of control of the future, even if it's negative. So first of all, you need to know that worry can be very addictive as a way of control, because if we don't worry, there's a part of us that feels unsafe with being uncertain, even if the certainty we're creating is that this is bad. Oh my gosh, something's happening, et cetera. The brain would rather be certain and scared than uncertain and trusting. So that's the first allegiance that has to be broken. And that's something we start off with right away in Primal Trust is teasing out that allegiance with worry equals certainty and I'm actually addicted to it versus surrender, unknown, a little more peace, but is very scary for the brain, okay? And so the chronic worry, you know, we're constantly making meaning of what we're feeling in our body. So the first thing is that we use worry as a way of control. The second thing is that the brain is a rehearsal machine. It's a meaning making machine. And all of the symptoms you feel, it wants to make a meaning. Is this good or bad? Safe or unsafe? Threat or non-threat? And over time with your symptoms, especially if you've gotten a lot of diagnoses and have been told by experts how dangerous this is, the brain is going to start making very negative meaning immediately as a way of, again, trying to control and get certainty. So we have to break the allegiance with making meaning with everything that we're feeling. Oh, I'm reacting to this. Oh, this is because I ate that. Oh, this is that. You've got to start being like, I don't know. This is just what I'm feeling right now. It doesn't mean you don't feel it, but giving it a story and a meaning has got to be broken in order for this process to start unraveling with that second reaction that I talked about at the beginning of this talk. And the other thing I want to say is that we live in a culture where we trust our brain way too much. We trust what we think and we trust what we're perceiving, but we don't realize we are just rehearsing our thoughts of the past. And so when you're getting symptoms and you're trying to figure out what it is, part of it is that you are trusting your brain to figure this out. And I will tell you, if you were like me and you've been on this path for months or years, if your brain was able to figure it out, it would have by now. If your brain was able to figure this out, it would have by now. It's not the way. You're not going to figure it all out. So it's Again, breaking allegiance with when you're starting to ruminate and think, I'm not figuring this out. This isn't working. Like I said, I had to just stop and go outside and lay in the grass and let my kids play around me and be like, I don't know what to do. And in that surrender, I eventually actually got an inspired action to self-heal because I quit trying to figure it out. I allowed a greater source to inspire me instead of what to do when I let go. So those are a few things I would say about worry. That's really good. I just want to repeat this again. If your brain could figure this out, it would have by now. And Mm -hmm. just let that sit. Yeah. And that is a hard breakup. It's a very hard codependent relationship (laughs) to break up with. The fix it mentality is keeping you so stressed and running so much stress chemistry that that is a big part of that mast cell ongoing inflammatory response is this looping a brain to body, feeling the body symptom, 
making meaning of it, getting stress, sending stress chemistry back into the body. It's one big loop and we've got to yeah. break that loop. And that's what we do in primal trust. We learn how to break that loop. That's so good. I, I love that. And I, I've shared on the show before that I've had some issues in the past with allergic reactions. Like I had an anaphylaxis episode previously. And so it's interesting for me, I could eat something and immediately I look down and I see a little redness on my skin and my brain will tell me <laughs> that's it. It's happening again, you know, find the EpiPen. And the reality is I could have just like brushed up against it, or it, it could be, you know, a plethora of things. And it's, um, I've been using a nervous system calming technique to help me work through that process. And it's, it's been a game changer already just to calm down and um, limit any sort of like near panic attack scenarios. And I'm, I'm sure our community can relate to that, how we can so quickly spiral from what yes. is what what is maybe a little a little molehill becomes this big yeah. mental health and physical health mountain in our yeah. lives. Yeah. So I would I would love to just you know touch on a, a little bit of a, a the pivot of a topic, but I want to talk about um, movement and how how is movement and a lack of movement, if you will, be a problem for the nervous system. I think about you know the um, the early twenty twenty season of all of our lives and how um, a lot of us stayed inside or like up here in Michigan, as you understand as a Michigander, when it's snow, I mean, we're not out running around like we are in the springtime and there's very clear, like, you know, um, disordered way of life with depression sinking mm -hmm. in because of a lack of movement. And so I'd love for you to just share some of your expertise around that. And um, especially as we're the weather starting to change for those of us, at least in the States, some of you might have different climates, but mm -hmm. how can we be um, living our life a little bit differently? Maybe give us a little bit of that like inspired aha of what we yeah. can be doing to serve our nervous system in this season. Uh, first, I'll say I know that when I was sick, um, movement was very difficult. I mean, just taking a shower was exhausting. Um, and I remember feeling afraid to crash. And a lot of you probably have that experience where you're afraid of crashing. However, one of the number one statistics and indicators of health is movement, is exercise. If you look at studies of, of mortality prediction, those who stop moving it's not good. And that is because so much of our body depends on our movement every day. Our brain is constantly syncing up with our body and our organs and our energy flow. And I'm going to take this even into like chakras and meridians. Like you can take it all the way to that level. Movement is a constant communication back to the brain of, 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 of moving our energy, our lymph, our blood, that's what's going to detoxify us. It keeps our energy field going. So one of the biggest principles we have in Primal Trust is to become somebody who moves their body every day, to have that be part of your identity. I am somebody who moves or exercises every day. Now, how do you move? That's individual. You might be bed bound right now, like I was for a while. And my movement was yin yoga exercises in bed or simple squeezing and relaxing to help with POTS symptoms, um, postural orthostatic tachycardia. Now, other people, they might be out there walking and hiking, but either way, becoming someone who moves their body every day is a crucial identity shift when you've got chronic illness. You've got to move the lymph. You've got to move the blood. You've got to move your energy system so that the body and its communication comes back online. We are an energetic body. If we are stagnant, our energy stagnates, our function stagnates, our organs suffer, our digestion suffers, and we become more of a cesspond. You know, think about uh, water that isn't moving. What happens? It gets full of bacteria and gunk. That is our body. We are mostly water, you guys. If we don't move, you will be a toxic Cesspun. So even if it's literally like laying there and squeezing and relaxing, squeezing your legs and relaxing, that's really great, especially if you have postural uh, orthostatic tachycardia or chronic fatigue stuff, just simple movement, simple stretching, 
and moving or making a, a movement goal. I remember at first it was walking down to my driveway and back and then down the street and back and then across the, you know, it just kept going more and more and more, but it's important to move. So there's my spiel. It was a good spiel. And, and I, I will say for myself, um, and I guess I'm, I'm trying to put myself in our community shoes. Um, I would ask you the question, well, how, how do all those small little movements really make a difference? Like if I had to think of the little voice in my head right now, that's like, how is squeezing a ball or lifting my leg a couple times or walking to my mailbox and back? How is that really, really making a difference in my life right now? Well, there's movement that has different goals. I mean, you've got movement for like losing weight and building muscle. And then you have movement for moving lymph and blood and moving lymph and blood doesn't take a lot. It really doesn't. It's just a little bit of movement. And that creates a system that's just like think of a stagnant water and a pebble drops, you're going to ripple and the whole thing is going to move a little bit. That's all we need to get started is that little bit of movement to keep the lymph and the blood moving. And then you can work on those bigger goals like losing weight or building muscle or whatever it might be. And yeah, that's going to take more movement. But for your health, we're starting with our lymph and our blood and just our general energy system. So, you know, I really like learning Qigong, basic yin yoga, basic squeeze and relax, stretching. Um, there's a company called Human Garage that has a whole free fascia uh, movement program that I love. So moving our fascia. So Google Human Garage and it's a it's actually, really I, I follow it on Instagram. He's amazing. He does live, live work too, all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So I love that, especially for chronic illness, because our fascia is really where, where it's at. Honestly, we need to move our fascia. I would be doing dry skin brushing as well as kind of part of your movement, that kind of thing. You're just moving that stagnant pond to get it flowing again and, and self-cleaning. That's good. I love that. Thank you for providing such a like, I, I think it's it's always like yourself, Beth is such an expert and I am such a newbie to this world. Yeah. And, <laughs> and so sometimes it can be like, where do I start? How do I start? And sometimes just knowing like, here's a resource, I can watch this, I can go to this, I can um, utilize these tools you know, that's just a great like first hump <laughs> to kind of get over. Well, I love that you touched on the topic of um, just the limbic and the activity of, of, of moving the body. And so I'd love to kind of talk through, you know, do you personally ever struggle with limbic retraining, right? This is like a huge part of your approach. And, um, you know, what do you find works well in your own personal health journey since you've had such an incredible success story? And then, you um, I'd love if you'd give maybe a guideline or some wisdom for those that are maybe struggling today, trying to find their right tool. So limbic retraining typically means brain retraining. And that's, you know, in our program in Regulate, we have over 40 tools in our level one program alone. And brain retraining is only one of them. So that just gives you some perspective here that it's not, it doesn't have to just be brain retraining. I know that there are programs out there that that's all they teach is brain retraining. That's not my approach because I find that, yeah, it's not, it depends on where you're at in your journey. Some people will really reject it and resist it. And so we have to do other approaches. So if you're really struggling with brain retraining, I would say focus on something else for a little while. Vagus nerve toning, somatics, um, other types of trauma resolution. We have functional neurology exercises to help get our are, um, which are like eye exercises to help to get to get your brain working better. There's a lot of other things you can do. The other thing with brain retraining that I'll say is in primal trust, we don't start out with brain retraining because so many people have resistance to it when they're really sick. It's hard for them to just think positive and all of that kind of stuff. So we work on other things first. We work on vagus nerve toning and some other things just to get the nervous system to have more capacity to do the brain retraining. And then in addition, brain retraining and primal trust, we've got several different ways of doing it. There isn't just one way. One of my favorite ways is to simply um, notice that I've been ruminating, interrupt that, get into my body for a minute with a breath or two, 
And then I go for a walk and I notice all of the different colors um, around me. I look for different colors. I'm really noticing my environment and I'm noticing things with wonder and awe. That's brain retraining too. It's not the same as just doing create, creative visualization that you'll see in other programs. So there's a lot of different ways to go about it. Thank you for such a practical example. And again, I think as you are tuned in today, whether you're listening to this live or on the replay, I hope that you're taking away that it's those small steps that that ultimately move you to the big breakthrough that you're seeking in your physical health, your mental health, your limbic system, all the different process. Now, we do always love to provide our community with different tools and resources. And so we, we personally at the clinic, at the Mass Cell, Mass Cell 360 clinic, we recommend Primal Trust as one of our resources. We talk about it all the time in our newsletter, on our website, in our blog. Like We're like cheerleaders over here. I was sharing with Dr. Kathleen beforehand that our team just raves about it. We have some team members working behind the scenes that use it as well. You've probably ridden in before and heard, heard a story or a testimony about how it's worked from them. And I would just love if you would just take a moment to just share about the vision of Primal Trust and um, who Primal Trust is for, and maybe even who it's not for. Because, you know, yeah. we're not here to push something on everyone. We want this to be the right next step for you. Beth always says, it's it's our job to just put it out there and it's up to you to decide if it's for you in this season. And it may not be for you in this season, but it could be for another loved one. So we like to always just make information available. And um, I did want to just read this for y'all. Beth is actually not just a, a, a supporter and advocate of Primal Trust, but I actually have like an official, like an official Beth quote, which I, I feel like I have to read. So I want you to hear this. So um, she said, Primal Trust is a comprehensive limbic retraining program that has helped thousands of our Mass Cell 360 clients and community members. The emphasis on trauma-informed and somatic approaches has been instrumental for so many, including myself, so including Beth. The results she's seen make Primal Trust a phenomenal value for those recovering in their health. So from Beth's Beth's words to your heart, I just I wanted you to hear that today, that we don't just recommend something. Nothing comes through our social platforms unless it's been tested and vetted by Beth and the team. And so she personally uses primal trust and our community uses it, our team uses it. So it's it's something that we love and we celebrate. So I'm going to hop off camera and I would love if you would just share the, the mission and the vision sure. of primal trust. Well, I want to share how the word primal trust even came to be because that's really part of it. Um, when I was healing, one of my mentors is a sound therapist and she was playing these sound bowls, these beautiful big Tibetan singing bowls. And she played this one bowl over my body. And I was like, what is that? What is that resonance? Because it was the most, it was like this feeling I had been craving my whole life. And she said, oh, this bowl is called primal trust. It's called the Schumann's resonance or the earth's heartbeat. And I'm like, that, that is the feeling that I need to heal. If I could feel that vibration all of the time, my body would heal because it was so connecting. And so eventually I was like, I'm looking for my primal trust, my connection to the trust of life itself, the feeling that my body is part of a, a, a beautiful big ecosystem that knows exactly how to deal with what's inside of it. And so primal trust, the vision is to help each of us connect to what was lost, to this inherent safety of trusting our body, life, the earth, that we have a wisdom within us that our bodies can self heal because we have lost that with this medical paradigm where all of our solutions are turned external. We need to take some of our power back or all of our power back and find a self-empowered way to start regulating our own biology so that it can do what it knows how to do. The body wants to heal. When you give the autonomic nervous system the right condition, it can self-heal. And so that's who it was for. Um, I know you asked a couple other questions, but um, I guess I'll say like, who is, it's for anyone with chronic illness, but I also have a lot of people that are like CEOs and entrepreneurs and they're stressed and they're dealing with burnout. 
the same tools apply. Instead of for calming your body down for uh, to decrease your chronic symptoms, you're calming your body down so you have more capacity to do what you want to do. Who it's not for, um, I would say, I honestly think it's <laughs> for a lot of people, but if you're not that interested in learning and or you don't have time to learn uh, the exercises or get involved, it's a pretty robust system. You know, it's a self mastery in the nervous system. And so maybe starting with a single book with a single tool would be better for you if you just feel like I don't really want to learn all of this right now. Um, that's OK. You know, I would say just start with something simple um, or, you know, Google on YouTube how to target your vagus nerve and learn some things there. When you're ready to really learn that self-mastery, that's where Primal Trust comes in. That was exactly what I was looking for. I mean, just being able to understand if something is for you or if something is not for you is just so key in your healing process. And sometimes we feel so overwhelmed and stuck. And like you mentioned, like just that resistance um, but I love the story of, I, I didn't know the story of how you came up with the name. And so the fact that there was literally a sound is just so powerful. Like the bowl apps like yeah. represented it. It's yeah. outstanding. So cool. Thank you for sharing that. I did want to just share this for our community so they could, they could see this. And I know Cam will post this behind the scenes in the chat. So for those of you that are looking to to give this a try. You feel that this is the next step for you. You would like to enroll in the Primal Trust in Academy. You can use a special code from us. Beth always makes sure we have special codes. So you get $10 off your first month. Just use the code 10MC360. And if I remember correctly, um, and if I'm wrong, please, Dr. Kathleen, correct me, but I think it's $69 for the first month. Is that it's correct? 96. Close. Turn it 96. around. 96. I flipped it. See, it's one of those days for me. <laughs> I have flipped it around on you. So um, that's just stop and start anytime too. So, you know, it's not like you're locked in. It's month to month. So that's so great to be able to, you know, have that. I mean, I saw, for example, there was um, a comment that I'm going to show here from Debbie and she, she was asking, you know, how much is it? Because she's, she's got triplets and she's stressed right now. And so that's a tough one, Debbie, you've got a lot going on there, but to say the least, I always think of that moment where you um, you're flying on the plane and they tell you to put the mask on yourself first. And all I know is a mama, needs to be in her best her, her best self that she can to handle having those triplets. So um, we are sending lots of positive energy and, and kind words your way today, that's for sure. Um, I'd love to get into just a couple other questions. Um, but before we do that, do you think we should go ahead and share the link with them about your incredible healing guide? What do you yes, think? Sure. Is it time? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Let's do yes. it. So this is the guide I talked about at the beginning, how healing happens, where I put together all of the science from all of these different disciplines into one book. I think it's probably the first book out there who's done that. And I have several tools to get started. Somebody said, is there anything to get started? Yes, we've got several tools in this book that you can do to get started. It's going to give you the whole overview of the entire approach. I think it's a great place to start. And I also just want to, I saw a question about, you know, is this just tons of videos that you have to watch before you get tools? The way that we've set up Primal Trust is we have live classes almost every single day that you can literally join today and practice tools today while watching some of the informational videos. And yes, I usually have um, a few tools with each module. But even with that, every single day, you can just show up and start practicing together. Um, there might be one or two days a week. Every so often, we don't have a class, but we usually have a class almost every day to practice together. So you don't need to wait. Um, anyway, so I just wanted to, to share that as well. There's lots of ways to just get started right away, whether it's that free book or joining and getting in in the live classes that are available every day. I love that. Thank you for sharing that. That's a great that's a, a great response to a very specific question, because I think that's always, you know, how much time am I going to spend on that? I know in our nervous system course, you know, there's different kind of 
tiers of what you might need per day. And so it could be as low as 10 minutes per day that you're you're using, you know, maybe a tool like Primal Trust, or maybe you're using something um, that's maybe more advanced that takes, you know, 30 minutes and it's a couple times a day. Everyone's a little bit different in their their process. So as always, we say check with your, your health practitioner, make sure it's right for you. And I'm sure that if you have any specific primal trust questions, you can just email their team and yep. they'll be delighted to support you and um, make sure it's, it's the right next step for you. Um, I do want to just go ahead and share just a couple, couple items of feedback. So I love this. Miriam just mentioned, she actually just came from one of your classes and she loves your program. So thank Aww. you for your work. That's cool. just outstanding. And um, Anne was just, you know, really just resonating with what we were talking about, about the cost and those challenges. And, you know, there's so many people that can't afford all the treatments, but I mean, gosh, how great would it be to even join the program for a short period of time, learn these great tools and resources and then apply them or even get it from the book, which is a great option as well. Um, let's see here. Cynthia mentioned it's a great ebook or healing guide as we've been calling it. It makes it easier to comprehend how it all ties together and provides some relief in understanding the why. So if you're looking for that, just comment in the chat. Cam will make sure that you get the direct link to download the free guide. And um, let's go into a couple of the other specific questions around primal trust. So one of the questions we have here from Deborah, and just, you know, we have not prefaced any of these questions, we're answering them on the fly. So if something, um, if you prefer to decline answering something, that's okay, you can say that too, just so we know how it goes around here. Um, but Deborah wanted to know, does primal trust help heal any sort of issues around autoimmunity? That's a great question. Yeah. We've had, I, I, there's on our uh, YouTube channel, you'll see a whole series of testimonials, many of them with autoimmune conditions that have reversed and gone away. Um, absolutely, because our immune system is run by our autonomic nervous system and that immune confusion has a lot to do with our nervous system just being in chaos. So when you get that regulated and streamlined many times, autoimmune conditions will at least improve if not reverse, so. Great. I love that. Ooh, check this one out. This is a good question from Anne. Um, she was really listening. I feel like she might have been taking notes over there. She said, how do you know when you you actually move to that point of replacing chronic worry and stress with self-help or healing tools? Like, How, how do, do you know when it's the right path? When it's the right path. I think it's always the right path if you're in worry. Now, here's the deal. Some people will use these healing tools with the same mindset of the worry. Like, oh my gosh, I need to do this to fix myself. It's still the same worry mindset. So one of the things we do in Primal Trust is we teach you how to use the tools to connect with yourself, to connect with your needs, to connect with your environment. Not, I'm using these tools to get my symptoms to go away because it's actually the same mindset. It's very tricky, you know. Um, and a lot of people go into these programs with an addiction, honestly. I see that a lot with the brain retraining community. They'll go into these brain retraining programs and they're addicted to that brain retraining program in the same way the worry was there. It was just, it's sort of like it gets coupled with the worry rather than I'm doing this to connect with myself so that I can feel my needs, so I can connect with my family more so that I can be a little more whole and I'll let my body unravel in its own time and way. So it's how and why you're using the tools. But I think everybody needs to be working on <laughs> replacing their chronic worry with self-awareness practices. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. This question from A.L. Lee um, came in and was asking about primal trust and mold. I think this is a good one. Can you mm -hmm. speak to the paradox of like, telling your body it's safe when we actually, you know, mentally know like something like mold is unsafe. Yeah. A lot of people live in mold and they can tolerate it. So even though mold is a toxin, it is possible to live with it and have your body handle it. Now, that doesn't mean you don't clean it up. I actually had to live in mold. I couldn't afford to move when I was retraining. I now live in the desert. Um, well, I just bought a house with mold by accident, but that's a whole other story. I'm going to fix that. But anyway, I had to retrain while living in mold. Okay. I didn't have the ability to 
fully move. I cleaned it as best as I could. But he also knew that many years of my life, I lived in mold and my body wasn't sick. So even the house I just bought, I lived there for three months. I didn't react to it at all. I just found out I had mold. Didn't react. Great. That means I'm doing better. So yes, it's not, it's a toxin. And that second reaction is freaking out about the toxin is not helping you heal. What's even more unsafe is that you're freaking out about being in mold. That's what's making you even more sick. So I'm going to get as aligned as I can while living in this mold so that my body can deal with it. I'm going to clean it as much as I can. I'll do my protocols to help if that's what you're doing. But the worrying about it and making it a threat is keeping your limbic system in a fight or flight. It's not going to help you heal to keep looking for tigers all day and to be like, this is terrible. Yes, it's not ideal. You'll deal with it the best you can. And you're going to try to regulate within it. So it's a little bit of a mind trick there about trusting that your body can handle at least some amount of mold when it is in a regulated state. Okay. That's really good. That reminds me of some of the meditation work we've done. Like Beth has created a, a custom MCAST meditation that went along with one of our programs. And it was just so great to, to be able to just actually process like to love your body, feel your body, sense your body and, and appreciate it and understand that um, like your body can handle it. Like we've got to change that thought process. It is possible. So possible. thank you for sharing that very honest and authentic like yeah. truth because you're literally in it right now. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I, I would love to know, um, this is not a question that someone submitted, but I would love to ask how, how do you kind of like get back on the wagon after a flare or after a challenge, a trauma, something has come up in yeah. your life? How, how, you know, as someone that has pioneered a program for hundreds, yeah. of, like thousands of people, how, you know, I'd just love for you to share. How do you get yeah. back, back to that well, place of life is not like this for anybody, even somebody who's a nervous system expert, nervous system self mastery means I think knowing how and when to use the tools to help you ride the waves and come back into homeostasis. So I know if things like something big happens, I know that I need to attend to my body and my brain a little more that day. So I will, you know, I have a busy life running this company. I might block out a couple hours, go out in nature, do some breathing, maybe do some brain retraining. If I'm having like my mind's getting stuck ruminating on something, I use yeah. brain retraining when my mind is ruminating too much. I use body-based stuff when I just feel like, I have all this energy pent up or I'm not processing something. So I'll make space to say, I need to process this. I need to carve out this time. I can't let this build up or, you know, that's how symptoms start building up because you're not attending to yourself and your body will start to scream to get your attention to attend to it. So yeah. these are lifestyle tools. Now I don't need to use them every day anymore because generally my autonomic nervous system is more in balance, but I still do self-care every day. I do movement every day. I do journaling every day. I do breathe every day, but I'm not like, oh, I've got to do my brain retraining every day now. That was a stage I had to go through. But if I'm going through a bumpy time, I might need to do brain retraining for a few days because I'm dealing with something, um, you know, something emotional has happened or whatever. And so life happens. That's why these are tools, our lifestyle tools. And you learn that, you start to learn that your body is demanding your attention to help you process something rather than stuffing and getting busy. And so that's still my goal is listening to my body. When do I need to take time alone because I've been working too hard or whatever. So that's outstanding. Well, thank you so much for just sharing with us today. I'm going to go ahead and put, um, this slide back up there for those of you that want to join um, Primal Trust. This offer doesn't expire. You know, sometimes we're like, hey, fast action, get it by the end of the week. Um, you know, this is a tool, like we said, that's that's there for you when it's time for you. So we yeah. want you to take the time, consider it, make sure it's the right tool for you. Give it a go. If you have questions, you can always email us. You can drop a comment on Facebook or YouTube and we'll get you to the right place. But 
thank you. Just thank you genuinely for your time today, Dr. Kathleen King. We are honored to just be an extension of the Primal Trust family and community, it feels like, over here Absolutely. at Medical 360. And we're just, Absolutely. we're grateful for you. We're grateful for what you've done. And thank you for continuing to create resources to bring breakthrough in all of our chronic health needs. It is an honor to be able to give back after everything I went through. Um, you know, we're in the middle of the, like, I think a huge paradigm shift of how we're approaching chronic illness. We're about to really break through a barrier. I believe that between what we're learning with nervous system work and integrative medicine. And, you know, you guys are the pioneers and going to be helping so many people around the world heal because people are getting sick. They're getting toxic. Um, we live a lifestyle of just intense, fast paced stuff. And, these tools are going to be needed as the paradigm shift of our general wellness. You know, it's going to be more than just diet and exercise. It's going to be nervous system mastery going forward. So, you know, thank you for having me. Thank you for all of the questions. And I hope that those of you who join enjoyed primal, primal trust. So thank you everyone. Delighted to have you with us today and um, be well.